NWATNA.com. I'm James Walls, joined as always by Daniel Edler, and we're joined today by NWA TNA senior official Rudy Charles. Hello, everybody. This is Rudy. Hey, Rudy. Uh, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Yourself? I'm great, thanks. Okay. The first question we have for you is, were you a wrestling fan growing up? Uh, yeah, I, I really got kind of a late start as a fan. I, I guess it wasn't... Uh, I guess when I was like a freshman in high school or so is when I really started watching it. And uh, just, um, so you know, a lot of people were fans since like five or six years old, but I guess I got a little late bloomer, if you will. Who were some of your favorites when you started watching? Uh, you know, Razor Ramon is a favorite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, like uh, Jerry Lawler, uh, Jeff Jarrett, I guess. Um, uh, I watched a lot of USWA when I first started watching wrestling, and you know, WWF, of course. They were big everywhere, and, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, I guess, the top WWF talent was I always liked. So. When did you want to uh, get involved in the business? When did you realize this was something you wanted to do? Well, uh, I guess the, uh, I'll, get, I'll give you a little, the, I guess, the background of how I kind of started refereeing it. I started doing soccer when I was in the eighth grade, so I've always kind of, you know, I've always liked refereeing, you know. And then uh, as a senior in high school, I was at one of the matches and went and talked to one of the referees after the show about maybe doing that. I was like, you know, I figured, uh, you know, I do soccer, maybe I could uh, referee some wrestling also, you know. <laughs> and I just uh, went up and talked to him, and uh, a few months later started training and just kind of went from there. I just kind of, I don't know, I never really decided, hey, I was going to be a wrestling referee. It just kind of happened. This is from a chat member, Ravel. He wants to know if you ever um, wanted to be a wrestler or was it a referee all, the time, all along? Pretty much just a, a referee. Um, you know, I mean, guy, I've always said that, you know, I'm not big enough to be a wrestler. And, you know, now with, like, guys like Red and Johnny Storm, you know, they're uh, actually a little bit smaller than me. I hate to say that about them. But, uh, but I mean, it's just it's something I love. And I'm going to – I would not – I'm a better, uh, I would never be able to be as good of a, how am I trying to say? I'm a better referee than I ever could be a wrestler, you know? Right, uh, I understand what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the way I can contribute to wrestling and, and, and do my part is as a referee. Many people don't know, but what kind of training goes into being a referee? Um, well, I, uh, personally, uh, I, I try and watch a lot of uh, tape. You know, I, See how the referees react to certain situations. You know, it's one thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you haven't seen it, it's hard to know what to do. Um, when uh, when I first started training, the guy that trained me, Mark Vance, uh, who was a referee for USWA towards the end, he um, he uh, yeah, I just I'd go to some of the matches with him and, and watch him referee. You know, if I had questions, I'd ask him. Uh, just you know, but there's. Uh, as far as, you know, training, or, well, I guess uh, getting experience and getting good at it, there's no substitute for being in the ring and, you know, actually getting in there and doing it. You just touched on it, but where did you train? Where did you learn? Uh, Mark Vance, like I said, he was the guy that trained me, and uh, he had his own um, promotion out of Evansville, Indiana, which is where I'm from originally, and I, I trained with him and, and refereed for him for years mm. uh, and for his promotion. Uh, Dan, what... Sorry, sorry. Yeah, and field it. Uh, often um, referees take uh, a larger bump than like ballets, managers. Did you have to go through any of the motions that, that a normal wrestler would through training when you yeah, were uh, the ref? I guess I really didn't have to, but I uh, I got in there some uh, and, and did some training, you know, to take uh, suplexes and you know hip tosses and uh, headlock takeovers and all that stuff because. I knew that if I ever came along in a match and, uh, you know, I would have been able to protect myself a little bit and, uh, you know, know how to take it without getting hurt too bad. And I, I think it's been, you know, uh, it's been to my advantage having n known how to do some of that stuff. It's helped me out some. Where have you worked? Uh, I've worked, uh, let's see, pretty much in southwestern Indiana is where I worked for years and I did southern western Kentucky. Um, and then uh, last year I started working down in Nashville some. I uh, worked, uh, let's see, so just uh, pretty much around the region here, you know, the Mid-South area. 
I really, I, and that's that's one goal of mine. Also, is to you know, do a little bit more traveling, uh, you know, work a, around the country. Maybe go to uh, Japan or or Australia or something like that. That'd be uh, you know, a pretty, uh, that'd be definitely something pretty nice. I would be like to do. Given um, given your like expanded role with uh, NWA TNA, is your contract status one where you're signed to six months, or are you the one that call long time, uh, long term signees? Well, I don't think I can give the exact details, but I'm I'm there for uh, quite a few more months, and I'm uh, very happy to be there. So. How did you originally become signed with TNA? Is it through? The right uh, it was a uh, Burt Prentice, the guy who he runs a local independent show out of Nashville, and he's worked closely with TNA. I'd refereed for him, and you know he saw. Um, I guess uh, he, he liked what he saw in me. You know he saw. I, I did a good job out there. I guess you know I'm trying to promote my. Well, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. I, don't worry, you can sound, you know, <laughs> I know what you mean, to, don't worry about it. Um, but he, he uh, you know, thought I was uh, confident and able to, to do that, so he, uh, uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, what was the last question we asked, Dan? Um, I guess it was, uh, oh, how I got involved with uh, TNA. Right, right. Okay, ready? Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, I was refereeing for Burton, um, he uh, saw that I, you know, I was doing okay with it and uh, had the confidence in me that I could do well with it. And uh, he got me on, and I started out the first show. I don't know if uh, if you guys saw the first show or not, but the only time I was on there was a uh, pull apart. You know, nobody right. ever mentioned who, you know, just the uh, nameless referee. So I was <laughs> the assistant uh, standby referee for the first several of the first few shows. Right. And then uh, finally, uh, they uh, I got to do a dark match and. Uh, you know, Scott Armstrong and uh, Mark Johnson, they were there at the time, both very happy with what they saw us. Uh, Jeff and Jerry Jarrett were both very happy, which I was really happy. Uh, I, I thought I did real well with that and uh, started refereeing uh, on the pay-per-view and just kind of had gone from there. Excellent. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, Jeff and Razor as some of your favorites. Um, mm -hmm. What was it like working with people you'd uh, watch growing up? Well, it's, it's really kind of weird because, you know, like I said, you know, I'd seen Jeff and, and Razor, you know, Scott Hall, you know, wrestle on several of the WWF pay-per-views, and for me to be in the ring with them, it's really qu uh, quite an honor, you know. Um, it's, it, I guess, you know, a lot of people would, uh, I, I don't know, I was just, I'm very happy, happy to uh, be able to be in there and work with them, and, you know, contribute, and, uh, you know, to try and have a good match. And it's just, it's, it's really quite an honor to be able to work with some of these guys that, you know, that I used to watch on TV. This is from uh, chat member Edgehead. He wants to know. He wants to know uh, what's your creative opinion of Vince Russo. He has some very interesting ideas, and I actually got a chance to sit down with him once. And uh, you know, some of the stuff I don't necessarily disagree with him on. He's got a, a lot of the stuff he says makes sense. Um, some of it's I may not agree with, but I mean, he, he definitely he loves the business. His heart. He loves wrestling, um, and uh, I can't fault him for that at all. A lot of people, they don't understand him, I guess. Uh, but um, I don't know, he's just, he gets a lot of bad rap for right. things, and I don't think that was necessarily his fault. Right, that's what Bob Ryder basically was saying, too. Yeah. Um, would you ever consider going to the WWE, if offered? Um, that's definitely, uh, you know, I, as a kid, Right. Growing up, you know, I was like, well, I mean, I guess once I started refereeing, I always kind of said, you know, I'd like to referee for them one day. And, but, you know, I'm, I'm in a very good spot right now. I'm the uh, the senior official and, and the, uh, the number one guy in the number two promotion, you know. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm very happy with where I'm at right now. You know, I'll never say never, but um, that's, uh, that's not even uh, anything. It's not a possibility right now, so I don't really worry about it too much. Um, um, there's some great guys I'm working with right now, so. Uh, Dan, you want to do the word associations? Yeah, sure. I've got, uh, got a few well, names you hear just throwing in. Um, okay. You don't have to give us one word answers. You can ramble on and rant on as much as you want. But um, uh, we've got the words like that. World Championship Wrestling. Um, I never really watched it a whole lot. I watched it some, uh, but it's like... It was very. Uh, 
it, it could have been so much more had people managed it more correctly. Okay. They had some good wrestling on there, but the uh, the management part wasn't always on the same page, I guess. The current in indie scene. Uh, I'm sorry? The current independent wrestling scene. You know. Uh, very good. There's a lot of great talent out there, and, you know, teenagers doing a good job at getting a lot of those guys on and giving them a shot. There's, uh, there's so much... <laughs> It's amazing. And they just do so much crazy stuff. Uh, it's, it's just amazing what they do. It's, I, I think it's very good right now. And you know, there's definitely not a loss for talent. Mm. Jeff and Jerry Jarrett. Um, very, very good people, I guess. I've been working for them since June. And, you know, I, I had no idea what to expect when I started working for them. But they're very, uh, very good. Uh, very good to work for. You know, they're... Uh, Jeff, he, uh, very good natured, uh, jokes around the office, you know, occasionally if you get him upset, he'll swing a chair at you or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but they're very good people to work for. Vincent Man. Uh, he is, you know, the man as far as, as, uh, wrestling is concerned, you know. He, uh, has made wrestling into what it is today, and he's the top dog, he's that for a reason. He's finally Earl Hebner. Uh, the man as far as refereeing, he's always, I guess, uh, I would kind of have enjoyed his, you know, his style. Uh, he, you know, he's a top guy in WWF, I'm sorry, WWE now, and, uh, he's, um, he just, I, I always enjoy watching him, and he does, he's uh, fun for me to watch. He's the man. Hmm. Had a few questions in about, um, uh, your fight books. Uh, apparently you had a poll on your website so should you keep them or should you not be um, yeah. going, going to be auctioning them up at any point in a future uh, TNA, uh, auction or maybe uh, if they have another uh, <laughs> another uh, silent auction on the website or something like that you know give them to charity or something <laughs> <laughs> um, will you be taking part in the upcoming TNA school teaching training school as possibly because I mean uh, people might want to enter the business and they may not want just want to be an earring star so Sure, yeah. you want to do your job, you be interested? Yeah, yeah if, if they want me to help out, I'd love to. Um, I don't know if, if there's much interest in expressed um, as far as referees joining. Uh, you know, anything that I can do to help out, you know, uh, I'd love to. So I've, I've been looking around at uh, certain courses like involving inside the business, and there aren't really that many to do with uh, ring announcing and refereeing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. They've all been centering on in-ring work, but I mean, people may not want to do that and may want to get interested in your job. That's the sort of thing I'd be interested in personally, but it'd be good to see you uh, reading a new line of Mini Rudy's. <laughs> <laughs> mini Rudy's? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's been an honor speaking with you and we really appreciated the interview and yes, thank you guys. Thank you for the time. Now we finally got to do it. I know kind of missed track a few times. But. Hey, that's okay. As long as we got it now, though. It was, it was great. It was a great job. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more from the interactive interview.